So here's the next part. I'm gonna transfer into this next one. Frat boy culture. Yeah. I got to do timestamps. I'm you guys are really liking it where you do timestamps. Bro stamps. culture. Isn't that called lad culture in the UK? Over in the UK, Probably. sure. Lads. What? The the Brits did, you guys, did you guys have much experience with the frats in the sororities? A little bit. Not yeah. in Canada. Or whatever. <laughs> yeah. they, they're no, non-existent Purdue, here. Purdue, when I was at Purdue University, was very, um, very Greek, they would mm -hmm. say or whatever. Right? So... Um, yeah, I, here, I don't know what you're talking about, so please walk me through it like I'm an idiot. You kind of needed to go to those things. But it was it was kind of sad at the same time because us guys who weren't in the frats, we viewed the guys in the frats like, oh, they had to pay for their friendships. They had to pay for access to the girls. Like it was it was kind of, uh, I don't know, like if you weren't in the frat, you looked very down on them. But the frats looked down on everybody else. Like you couldn't get into their their parties. They they hoarded a lot of the chicks because they had good time. They had the best drugs. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Got it. they had big houses, big parties. This was you know back in the day. I don't think they do that shit anymore. But um, yeah, like, I, I don't know. Like the the whole frat thing was weird to me. Well, and that's Rolo and Clary. You guys know this. Like the frat boy culture has been under attack ever since what the UVA mm -hmm. rape hoax or grape hoax. Yeah. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's but it's like there's a bunch of little things, mattress girl, all that stuff. Rolo, I know you've got stats in this because I know you've talked about it. I've seen those episodes. Yeah. Well, I, I, you, you, you wanna, you here's wanna, the question. So here's the question I wanted to lead time. in with I'll you. Give though. You story time. I'll give you story time with Rolo. Oh, please do. Like. Please do. Um, when I went back to finally go get my degrees, right? I double majored finally. Um, when I went back, I was already like 32, 33 when I went back to when I went back to school, right? And uh, just because I'm like, I got all, like, I had all this, like these credits, but I needed to get them all together and stuff. And I just, I, it was at a point where I was just like, I, I'm just going to get it. I need a degree. Right. And, and uh, yes, it was a, it was an arts degree until I decided to get uh, the science of psychology too. Um, but uh, I remember <laughs> I'm here. I am like, I'm a much older student at this time. Like I'm in my early thirties and most of the people that I'm in, like sitting in class with are in their like early twenties. And it was, I'm, I'm kind of glad that I went at that time because I think I could appreciate like, at a, you know, the quality you know, the whatever for what passed for a quality education back then I could appreciate it a little bit more than I could have, like say if I was in my twenties. So you hear all these guys talking about like, Oh, I, uh, uh, what do I? What am I going to need Western traditions for? Why am I going to need this? I'll never use it in my in my job. It was like all like focused on just like job job acquisition. But I'll tell you what was funny is on the classes where I was there, like say in the afternoons, because I was working and going to school at the same time. So I would be done with a an eight hour nine hour day at work, and then I would go to to classes to go and uh, to finish my degree up right and. I'm there and I remember like right when like it was like usually it was like rush week. If you know what rush week is, if you've ever been in a frat or a sorority, you know what rush week is. What it is, it's like a membership drive. They're trying to recruit you. And so I would always have to go to orientations and everything every time there was a new semester. So I'd have to go do that and go through the rigmarole of that shit. But what was funny is like I'd have to go do that, especially in the summertime, because it would be like like in August, I think like late August. And there would be frats that would be there and they would actually try to recruit me at being like 32, 33 years old to be in the, in the frat. And man, let me tell you something. It was tempting. It was very tempting to go into it because yeah, you're, cause I'm an older guy. Right. So they want like, yeah. they want somebody who's older in the front. Like I can't live in the frat house if, if that, just so you know. Right. And so like, they're trying to recruit me during rush week. And it was like every time. And remember I was there for four years. So I'm like every, for like every August for four years, I'm like, I got guys who are like, hey man, you know, you should join, for, you know, you, you'll get the full college experience. And then there's certain frats and sororities that have like different, um, different, uh, uh, like reputations. And I could never do it, but I thought it was interesting that there were so many guys that looked at me and they're like, we need that guy in our frat, right? Even though he's an older, probably because I have money, right? They, they know you got a GPA too, is probably yeah, what it was as well. Yeah, I thought it was interesting. I really, really wanted to do it, but like I just by, you know, my scheduling and logistics wouldn't allow me to do it just to say I was in a frat. Right. But that ne it never happened. I'm trying to picture you as John Belushi. No, yeah, I know. Right. I think it would be kind of funny to have been like the frat dad, you know, like been in there and like, you know, schooled these guys around. But Teach you guys how to fold a toga. Yeah, <laughs> like, uh, it was never really old school. Happen. 
Yeah. But it was funny that they wanted to recruit me for like, like at least there was at least two frats out of like, I think there are like six on campus in UNR that, uh, that wanted me to be in. You know what? I think there's something innate about this because with the way you guys describe frat culture, my university experience had none of that, but mm. the military did like Nelly's block, the, the base barracks was exactly how you describe frat boy culture with like the clicks going in, the parties mm -hmm. going in, hoarding the girls, having the clicky stuff right there. And I'm wondering, there's got to be something innate about guys that when they get together and form a community, like an all guy community, that that frat boy culture is more nature than nurtured, you know? Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, which makes her tribalism almost to a certain oh, yeah. extent. Yeah, and definitely. it's repressed, uh, as Fitch was saying, it's repressed because... The schools, for many reasons I can go into, is is just a, a genuinely toxic environment. And it is an environment that masculinity and men are not going to grow or thrive or succeed in. It's prison. It's headed up by girls who don't give a damn about you. Lazy people go into education. Um, and it's, it's just a, a huge babysitting operation. So your mom can go work and pay off her student loans, maybe uh, for a degree <laughs> in sociology. And that's the truth. That that's yeah. honest to God's truth. So there is no care or concern. And under the current zeitgeist of woman at the expense of the, you know, the, the world is not enough. We can burn it for the way boys are kicked way back. So, uh, that there is no. Boys are not going to thrive or sprout in that market. Then you get to college, and, and even now it's, it's completely different. But it was the first time you could get out, and unless you were in sports, which I don't know what the current uh, condition of sports are in high school or middle school for boys, maybe you could get a little bit out there. But when you when you got to college, then it's like, okay, there's no parents. There's very little oversight or guidance. Now you could start forming, and albeit it was sophomoric and crass and crude and, and, and dumb, but at least these guys started forming group and you could join this group and get recruited and all that. Now, of course, college is nothing more than an extension of the education industry. Uh, they've cracked down on mass, certainly in, in culture. And I haven't seen a, a fraternity in a long time, but I hear from various agents in the field that they're now just doing the woke thing because, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. if I agree with women, uh, then I'll get late. So I yep. think the the idea uh -huh. of a 1980s house party or a movie uh, that is no longer the case. And it it sounds like these are just you know they're good nonprofit and we're going to help with them. We're going to you yeah. know they they would do uh, they would do parties with sororities simply to get laid because mm -hmm. uh, there was a fraternity that I kind of belonged to. They they wanted me to pledge and all that. Whoa so whoa whoa excited. whoa! What what? Get into that. What the, they wanted me to pledge? What are you part of, like a uh, Ligma Balls? Sorority no, or? no, no. This was the this was the, okay. All right, story time with Cappy. If really, I'll give you a very, very quick story. Um, true to classic 1980s movie form, the loser frat wanted me to join because I, I had a good GPA. Nerds. Yeah, and so uh, they I got invited to the parties and then some friendly guys and um. So I got to see it, but I just didn't have time. And I didn't have the money for the dues. So they really wanted me to to, to come on board. But it just it, – maybe I would have liked it. And I, I did have some fun with them, but I had to work. I had to go to school. So, um, But it was. Like they'd invite the hot girls from the hot girl sorority party. And and they were all snooty. And, and man, these guys just get drunk. And they're having a good time. They didn't give a damn about these girls. It was actually kind of kind of fun. Oh, man. Like um, I said, I, 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 I tell you what's funny is like when I was uh, – when I was approached uh, during rush week, uh, when I was in my thirties, like if I'd have been, if I'd have been like 23 instead of 33, like I would have been like, get the fuck out of here. You know, like I, I would not want to have anything to do with frat boys when I was like, you know, being in a frat fraternity or something when I was in my early twenties, so I was too busy, like, you know, doing the Hollywood metal scene and everything like that. And that was like anti whatever I was all about sure. at that time. Metal back then was kind of punk though. Almost <clears throat> like outsider shit though. Not well, mainstream it like it is was, now, isn't it? It was they're very tribal. Like uh, once again, like human beings are tribal. Like like let's, I, I I hate it when I listen to like people like Peterson talking about oh the rights of the individual and shit. Like get the fuck out of here. Like that it, it's it's a feature of he being a human, not a bug. It's one of the one of the strengths of our species is that we are tribal. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And so like I get it right now when I'm when I'm doing counseling. One of the first things I do is I ask the guys, "Do you have a network? Do you have a tribe? Do you, do you have people that you hang out with at at the gym? Uh, do you like to what do you like to do? Go shooting? Do you like to play golf? Do you like to do this? What whatever your hobbies are? Like how are you social? And most of the guys don't have that. 
whatsoever. Like they're they're watching this show, right? They're they're on in on Reddit, they're on Discord, they're they have those are their friends, mm -hmm. but when they turn the computer off, they're there with themselves. And I think that that's kind of that that right there, just the the tribalism aspect. Even online, we'll still create tribes online. You know? Oh God, yeah, big time, dude. The hit pieces on all four of us alone shows that. Just and yeah. like we're a tribe ecosystem. I haven't, I haven't made it yet. Nobody's attacked me. I haven't made it yet. I'm not really. You'll get there. Don't worry, fish. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't been attacked by anybody yet. So that's You're your two things on social media. You need death threats and 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 nudes. Yeah. Preferably yeah. female nudes. People just say I'm boring. People call me boring, and then that's it. It's funny, the one guy that could kill them here with like a flick of a wrist, and he's like, ah, yeah, he's just boring. I mean, probably the least that's boring the funniest thing to me ever <laughs> is the fact that, like, being good at, oh, well, I don't care that you're good at fighting, you're boring. Like, yeah, I got it. I got it. Let me let me finish answer. one real quick point here with with Ryan. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I would say, uh, with the fraternity thing, or at least the lack of the phenomena of it. Uh, game back to it. That was usually a lot, say 10, 15 years ago, that was the point in time men could finally start, you'd have a masculine culture for all of its drawbacks. Mm -hmm. Now that's not even there. And now with the internet, people are just, you know, you're going to school online for God's sake. Yeah. So it is, so this, this bromance, at least in the analog world is, is probably outdated, but that doesn't mean there it's, isn't it's this hard. biological hardwiring to find a tribe and to mm -hmm have a have a crew of guys but that's probably where, where a lot men of go the, nowadays i don't know it's where a lot of the depression probably is coming they just yeah. had the new yeah. study that was released showing that there's no link between serotonin and depression yeah. so oh. all the SSRIs, well, that so sucks all the SSRIs. for ssris <laughs> well, all the people the 13 percent of the people in the united states that are on ssris it's bullshit you're just mm -hmm. being numbed the mm -hmm. reason the reason that you're probably feeling depressed is probably you don't have that social network. You probably don't. I have cannot that believe that the government friendship. will provide medication for something that doesn't actually cure the system that they're trying to cure. <laughs> this is unheard of in the last few years of Western <laughs> culture. <laughs> Shocking, isn't it? Yeah, I, I hear, who okay. here, sorry, Rolo. I'm asking you this one actually. Mm -hmm. Didn't the UN describe like isolation as a form of like a human rights violation? Like, oh, a yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, yeah, a solitary confinement, I guess. I have stats for this. I'll dig them up here real quick in the meantime. But like, um, I wanted to put this out there as far as like depression is concerned and being happy and all this other shit. One of the reasons I think why we have a misguided understanding of what depression is or what, you know, really, you're the reason why SSRIs are just sedation just like uh let's see uh oxycontin and and fentanyl and and vicodin like prescription painkillers those are sedations uh mm -hmm. pornography is a sedation alcoholism is a sedation uh anything that is an escape that from your shitty life is is a sedation but it keeps you stuck in the quicksand it keeps you stuck in neutral and so like you know when, when we're talking about depression we're talking about happiness you have to remember that the whole premise of it is like oh it should be this sustainable state of being for the rest of your life i want to be happy for the rest of my life i lived happily ever after right and the fact of the matter is, is that's not what the emotion of happiness is about uh depression happiness uh anger hunger like you know the things that come from from physical like phenomenon that trigger an emotional response in you, what that emotional response is meant to do is move you from one state to another state. So you'll find that when people are the most happy is when they're fucking doing something, when they're actually in the midst of something that they really Perfect. feel like that this is this is something I'm good at and I can do it and I really love doing it. Hell yeah, novel, walk me through this. <laughs> well, exactly. Well, see, it's in the doing, not the getting to this point. Once I have this, I'll be happy. Once I have my degree. I'll be happy. Once I get this job, I'll be happy. Once I get to this, this bitch in my life, I'll be happy. No, you won't. You're happy on the train or going from point A to point B, but it's not a sustainable state. And that's why you get SSRIs. I'm always depressed because depression is also an emotion meant to kick your ass out of one state and put you into another state. That's the really the motivation of emotions rather than saying, well, we should all just be happy all the time. That right there is what we're teaching. They're is being taught in schools right now by right. women because they think it's a sustainable state. It is not. It is in the doing. The humanity is defined by discontent, not content. And that's a good fucking thing. That's a feature, not a bug once again. I hate this too because you're right. Like you're tapping into like this is what our genes were kind of like built for because that's what's managed to have us survive all this time. 
And then you got the group saying, well, we're more than our genealogy. And so they completely shed it. Throw away the baby with the bathwater. We lose the male groups. We lose the male happiness, whatever. But then you get the other side of guys that start tapping into like esoteric mumbo jumbo thinking. We're getting back to our caveman roots. And both guys kind of miss the masculine history of this stuff, you know? Like just something mm -hmm. simple. Like, dude, John, you made a great joke about a guy dying with a dildo up his ass. That's great. And yeah. teacher even admit, dude, that's funny, but you fucked up. <laughs> Military had the same thing. So many guys is like, dude. How many times you fucked up and showed up late for work? Every time the officer of the watch before he charged you would be like, was she worth it? But you see what I mean? There's kind of this like punishment isn't necessarily something like don't avoid the pain, but they're teaching you to be calculated with your risks. Yeah, if you're mm -hmm. going to go out, get laid in San Diego on Remembrance Day because chicks there love the military, some Spanish tart, that's great. You're going to get fucked over when you get back here. But you made that decision. You had that autonomy to you. And this is the one thing that I kind of want to, at least if the audience gets nothing else from this, is that this certain controlled version of calculated risks that you can only learn when other guys, A, hold you accountable to it, but B, let you have the freedom to make your own decisions. I think you lose a part of what makes a man a man. And even if you're one of those, I want to make myself a better man for women, I think that's one of the things that they're attracted to to us. Because it's like, guys... You guys all have dated women in your lives. You've married women, whatever. How many of them were balls to the wall, don't give a shit about risk versus like neurotic risk averse? I don't know about you guys. My girl is risk averse to the max. Yeah, I'm assuming she, yours... yeah pretty, pretty risk averse. Yeah. And imagine yeah. looking at you. The guy is like, you know what? I don't give a fuck. I'm going to be a professional author. Are you like, I'm going to join a band again. It's been a while. And you, it's like mm, done with the UFC. Dana Car Dana's a fucking yeah. asshole. I'm going to start my own thing. <laughs> yep. That looks like a fucking superpower to a woman. And if you guys didn't have these guys in your life that helped you make these risky choices to help to learn what your risk tolerance was, mm -hmm. that shit would have all been gone. And we'd have all been weesh guys having I hate Rolo eight hour podcasts with the black pill waffles. <laughs> I, yeah, but I tried to fit in a shitting, but I just don't have the heart for it. I'm just too happy. Wait, again? What do uh, not Ryan Stone? I'm, I see he's the most important guy in the world, Ryan Stone. Give a f about Ryan Stone, or me and him have gone back and forth, blah, blah, yeah. blah. Ryan Stone does not pass the six foot test. He's not even a man. So I don't give a f about Ryan Stone.